Okay, Perikut Days, Posuk Lamad Zayin. The Yisubna Yisomi Ramsay Sukosa. The Benezo, they traveled from Ramses to Sukosa, to Sukos. Now, how many people traveled? Keshesh Meos Elif Ragdeg from Levad Mitov. 600,000 men, besides children. Okay, now, what are we speaking about? 600,000 men above the age of 20, plus the wives, besides the children. They traveled from Ramses to Sukkos. Now, do you know what it means to move that, that, those numbers? They have to leave exactly on the 15th in the morning. Now, how within moments do you move those numbers to shift them from one location to another? They were 130 miles from Ramses to Sukkos and instantaneously they were shifted from one location to another. This is the miracle. Now we find the Sephardo says Yosef was in the dungeon and the Stein, the wine steward tells Paro that there's this Jew slave who's in prison. He has the ability to interpret dreams. So what happened? They summoned him immediately, and it says they rushed him out of the dungeon, and they groomed him. He changed his clothing, and he was standing before Paro. They rushed him. So over there, the Sephardo says that just as then, Yosef almost instantaneously went from a prisoner riding in a dungeon to become the viceroy of Egypt, literally within moments. We find by Egypt, we were slaves. And in a moment, we gathered to leave. Identically, at the end of time, when it's time for the Gula Sido, the future redemption, it's going to happen instantaneously. Yeshua is Hashem Kerifayin. The salvation of God will come like a blink of an eye. That's how quickly it's going to happen. We find whatever, we find this change, it's instantaneous. Yosef instantaneously goes from one setting to the ultimate level. From slave to free man, <coughs> or the free man to be in a position of one of control. The Jews are slaves, were literally locked in there for 210 years. In a moment we gather, we leave, okay? The Gam of Rav Oleitom. Tur makes it a point. Not only did Jews leave, <coughs> the rabble. The rabble also left together with the Jews. The Tzol Uvoka Mikne Kovimod. Sheep, cattle, heavily, heavily laden with livestock. And this is all happening instantaneously. It says the era of Rav left with us. Why did the era of Rav leave? Is it because they saw the light? No. Why did they so-called jump on the bandwagon here? The Jews are leaving. They're going with the Jews. Why are they going with the Jews? Because they figured they want to be with a winner. Seemingly, that's the reason why they're leaving. Could have Moshe stopped them from coming? I mean, it was up to Moshe. Moshe could have said, we don't want you to come. Or you'll say, maybe not. Why? Because we find later that the way the Orchaim explains, when the Paro realized that we weren't coming back, it says Paro regretted he sent out the Jews and he sent out the people, his people. Why? Because as we mentioned yesterday, Paro suspected the Jews are not coming back. And he sent hundreds of thousands of his rabble with them and told them that if the Jews don't come back, you're going to assume 
the workload of the Jews. So giving them that threat, threat threatening them with that type of situation, that will guarantee that the rabble will not allow the Jews to go beyond the three day travel mark. So what happened? Three days come, the Jews keep traveling. The Egyptian realize they can't stop the Jews. So what, 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 what's their choice? To go back, what's gonna be if they go back? They're gonna become slaves. They're gonna have to sue the workload of the Jews. So they decided we're not going back because we're not fools. We're not going back to be slaves. So Paro, when he realized this mistake, he says, not only did I make a mistake by sending out the Jews, I made a mistake by sending out the hundreds of thousands of Egyptians because I lost them all. So, but that was originally why the Egyptians were sent with the Jews. Now, Moshe could have vetoed it, could have. And he, there's even a claim against him. Why, why didn't he veto it? Because we find who initiated, initiated the Chet Egel. The rabble initiated the Chet Egel because they themselves were idolaters. And Moshe is in Shemayim, it's the 40th day, receiving the first set of tablets, the Luchos. And Hashem says to Moshe, Lech Reid, go down immediately because your people have become corrupted. Kishich is Amcha, they become corrupted. So Hashem says to Mo so Moshe says to Hashem, what do you mean my people have become corrupted? Your people have become corrupted. The Jews, he says, no. Sheikh Zamcha is because the rabble, the rabble corrupted the Jews. Did you consult with me before, the, before the, you allow the rabble to come along with the Jews? Why, why don't you consult with me? Therefore, that's where the Chet Eichel took place. If you would have consulted, the rabble wouldn't have been there because you could have denied, denied them entry or vetoed and not allowed them to come. And that that you allowed it to come, ultimately that was the cause of the Chet Egil. That's what Hashem says to Moshe. Now, if Paro is sending them to guarantee their return, maybe Moshe didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Hashem says to Moshe, you should have, you should have denied them the right to come along. But if Paro is sending them, according to Rechaim, according to his explanation, to guarantee they return, power wouldn't have let them out. He would have understood immediately the ploy, three days means they're gone forever. Because otherwise, wouldn't he, why wouldn't he allow the rabble to come along? So evidently, Moshe had no choice. But according to the Chazal that Hashem said, that you're at fault, so evidently, he did have a choice. Moshe, if he would have put his foot down, Paro, Moshe was in a, a position of power. He had the upper hand. He could have said, Paro, it's our holiday. We're going to celebrate with our God. We don't want any foreigners in our midst. He could have stopped it. I'm just pointing that out. As much as Paro demanded that the rabble accompany us, Moshe could have stopped it. And he could have denied them entry that they should not be able to come along with the Jews. But the Torah makes it a point that here, that not only did 600,000 men, besides the children, the women, the livestock, leave Egypt, Gam Erev Rav Oli Itom. Erev, could have said, what's Erev Rav? Great numbers of this intermingling, okay? Which ultimately was the cause of the Chet Egil. So Rosh says, what's a Rav? Taruvas Umos Ovdi Kochovim. It was a mixture of nations who were idolaters. Shel Gerim. They claimed they were Gerim. Meaning they were Marithias. But still, whatever they, they presented themselves, Moshe should have denied them. Because otherwise, Hashem wouldn't have had a claim against Moshe. So we explained, even though this is for later, so why did Moshe allow the Erev Rav to come out with us? Right? Why did he allow it? It's an important point. Alan Shaking said he remembers what I said. Now, 
according to one opinion, why did we go to Egypt? We spent 210 years in Egypt, why? So one opinion in the Dorim is that after Avram Avinu had defeated the four mightiest kings and he had brought Lot and his family out of captivity, who were members at that time of the Sodom community, the king of Sodom says to Avram, Give me the people. You can keep all the spoils, the possessions. So what does Avram say? I will not take as much as a thread or a bootstrap from you. Because I don't want you to say, you made me wealthy. That's what he says to the king of Sodom. So the Gemara says, Avram should have said, what do you mean? I'm keep, give me the people. Avram had an opportunity then <clears throat> that he could have taken these people and brought, brought them into monotheism. He could have brought them Tachas Kanti Ashkina. Why did he allow Sodom, the king of Sodom, to, to retain his people? He should have demanded, I want the people. That that he did not, and he allowed them to remain with Sodom and ultimately be destroyed, that's why we went to Egypt. So Moshe thinks to himself, here we, all, we went to Egypt because Avram passed on the opportunity of taking pagans and turning with the monotheists. Here I have the opportunity to have hundreds of thousands of pagans. They want to come with us. So if I deny them, I'm just repeating the mistake of Avram Avinu. That's the reason why Moshe felt it wasn't important or necessary to consult with Hashem to allow him to take the, the, the rabble out of Egypt for that reason. However, <clears throat> there was one, one big difference. When Avram Avinu did not take them, which he should have, there was no Jewish people. It's not you bring a foreign element into a group that were believers that were beyond believers. So that was a fifth column within our midst, and therefore they could actually undermine everything. At the time of Ramavinu, they were all pagans. So every person he brought was considered a gain, a win, taking a pagan and turning him into a monotheist. So therefore, both settings were not the exact same setting. Therefore, Hashem says to Moshe, how did you, how did you not consult with me? Sheikh has Amchor. Your people have, have corrupted. You're at fault. Has nothing to do with me. But again, it's due what the Torah over here attested the fact not only did Jews leave in large numbers, come heir of Rav, Olo Itom. I just want to say the rabble is referred to as heir of Rav. Do an heir of, heir of means mixture. What's Rav? Rav means enormous, enormous amount of mixture. The word Rav is referring to what? The numbers. It wasn't just a small number of these intermingling of these nations. It was a very large number of pagans. The Balaturim points out something we've discussed many times. Masa of similar bonding. That what the Ovos, Akadosha, what they experience, that foretells what's going to be in the future. Meaning they set the dynamic. And as a result of that, it manifests itself in the future. For instance, the Medjur says <clears throat> there was a famine when Avram comes to Canaan. What does he do? Where does he go? He goes to Egypt. In the future, we went to Egypt. Sorry, Menu was not defiled. Therefore, no Jewish woman during this 10, 210 year period was defiled. When Avram left Egypt, what did he leave with? Tremendous wealth. When we leave Egypt, we leave with tremendous wealth. So Avram's experience as the founding patriarch of Klal Yisrael his experience set the dynamic that hundreds of years later, <clears throat> when we leave Egypt, we all that experience going to Egypt, leaving Egypt, and how we leave, he's foretelling the future due to what he experienced. We find that Yaakov, when he, after he's away from his home for 36 years, it says, the Sabalaturim says, quotes the Pasuk, 
Yaakov Nosa Sukosa. <clears throat> he traveled on his two year trek back. He traveled to Sukos with his family, with all his wealth, and with the herds and the flocks. So the Balturim says, Lomar Shemeschus Yaakov Yotzim Mitzrayim. As it says over here, they traveled from Rabseis to Sukosa over here. That is because Yaakov had traveled from to Sukosa. That was the, the entry, the beginning of the entry back into, into Eretz Yisrael, Sukosa. So again, it, that's the schus. It's alluding, why did we leave Egypt? Beschus Yaakov. That's the reason why we left Egypt. Since again, it goes into Maisa of a similar body. 